Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant. You know, how impressive to not just get one gimmick over and make money. You know, we're all just happy to get one gimmick and let it work. But for him to have three or four gimmicks over the years and that they worked. It wasn't just putting a mask on him and hoping it worked. I mean, he handsome Jimmy, you know, just being a, one of the Valiant brothers. And for Boogie to still be successful. He's booked every weekend. And I tell folks to this day, I hope when I'm 65 or 70 that people still want me around. You know, and forget, you know, being booked. I just want people to, to want to talk to me at 70 years old. So he's still booked every weekend. One of the nicest guys. You know, when you what you see on TV is amazing when you first meet him because he's so quiet and laid back. Uh, one of the first TV matches I ever uh, wrestled was, of course, against him and Jerry Lawler when they were coming in from Memphis to Georgia Championship Wrestling. So we've had almost a 30 – probably a 30-year friendship and still great friends of this day. Another one, I'll, I'll mention that Bill Eady, of course, the mass superstar, a lot of people don't know that he was one of the original Mongols, you know, back in the day. So he had that gimmick that he got over and, of course, become the mass superstar. And, of course, that part of our business I miss is just the mystique of that mask. You know, when I hear old-timers that, like, you know, wrestling too, that wouldn't take his mask off, in a, you know, he'd go take a shower with the mask on. And, man, I love that. You know, Mel Mascaris, there was never a picture of him without his mask. And, you know, you go back to, like, a, a, you know, used to be a guy named the Convict that wrestled. But he, he had a dog that actually wore a mask. He'd come to the arena, and his dog, he was so kayfabe, he, his dog had a mask on. Now, buddy, that's, that's pretty cool right there. You know, and, and so those, that, those things now, now, of course, you know, uh, in Mexico it's still very, very strong. But I miss that. You know, Bill Eady, of course, a lot of people know him as Demolition. Uh, and he made, you know, did so good with that. But to me, I can't even call him demolition. To me, uh, he's mass superstar to me. And that was just because I remember his, uh, I believed in him so much. I tell him this to this day is, you know, he did an angle on TV where he cut Paul Jones's hair one time, beat him, and he took out an old pair of scissors, cut Paul's hair. Well, I wanted to be so much like Paul and him that I was just a young kid. I went and cut my hair. I mean, I, I, mean, I just took gabs out. And I look at Bill Eady now, I tell him that, and he looks at me like, kid, are you nuts? You know, but I was so into that mystique. And to be friends with him now, one of the, you know, there's a few boys, a few of the guys left that nobody, you've ever heard, nobody said nothing bad about. And Bill Eady's probably at the top of that list. I don't think in all my years I've ever heard anybody say, you know, anything bad about him. And and just, just a super guy, unbelievable. Another still, me and him, I still love being in a ring with him. I probably, you know, Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express, you know, uh, of course I love Robert too, but I probably wrestled Ricky in single matches more than uh, anybody else in this business and still love it. I mean, still one of the top baby faces. You know, I, I'm in awe sometimes. I mean, I'll be in a ring with him and that rock and roll chant gets going and I I forget sometimes that I'm, uh-oh, I'm the bad guy here. You know, I got because I'm just marking out for that, you know, that chant and stuff like that and still looks great, you know. And I tell you, uh, probably one of my favorite Ricky Morton stories is a couple weeks ago we did a big outdoor show in Tarboro, North Carolina. And there was a lady there that had been a fan of Rock and Roll Express all of her life. And she's an older lady now. And she just wanted to meet Ricky Morton. And I was there in the back. And they brought her in the back to meet Ricky. And this lady, I mean, this grown woman, she's crying. She's a nervous wreck. She's shaking. And she just wanted to meet him. Of course, Ricky gives her a picture, a bandana. And she said, you know, you were my Justin Bieber. I mean, that's what she told him. I thought that was the coolest thing I've ever heard. You know, Ricky's crying. I'm crying. I mean, it was just a special moment that she got to meet the Rock and Roll Express. And I got to live when you hear about the Undertaker pop and, you know, even Sting, the big reaction. Rock and roll at that time, you know, in the 80s, was probably the hottest thing I've ever seen in my life. First time I ever met them, I worked them their first TV, and Dusty said, you're working this new team called the Rock and Roll Express. And my exact words were, what the heck is a Rock and Roll Express? Because nobody never heard of music and all that. They'd just come from Bill Watts. And all Dusty said, he said, just catch them. I said, excuse me? He said, just catch them. Whatever they do, just catch them. And bro, we got that rain. I knew quick what he meant, man. They were like everywhere. Unbelievable. And still, uh, I love them together. You know, they, they work a lot of single matches, but uh, still very, uh, you know, just great friends to this day. Made a lot of money with Ricky Morton. You don't take it for granted. I mean, I still, even that, that night, I mean, I'm in there and I'm looking around at these guys that I've all looked up to. I mean, I bugged Bill Eady to death and, and – of course, Jimmy Valiant, you know, his feud with Paul Jones and all that. And I'm looking there and saying, man, I'm part of this. And it's funny because you hear of a tag teams that, like, who's going to start? But I, I, there's no way I was going to let Bill Eady start. I mean, I'm here. I walk, you know, I, I went and had a, a, a ring jacket made like Bill Eady, you know, one of the mass superstars. 
with a big hood like he used to wear. And he looked at me and said, man, that's better than anything I've got. So for that moment, I didn't want to, it's one of those things you don't want it to end, you know, because you're having so much fun. And I look back and I just think of the experience that's in this ring right now, the years and the miles and the bumps and stuff. And I didn't want it to end. You know, they tell me you're going, you got 10, 15 minutes. I'm thinking, man, I'd have kept them out there for an hour. And, and to still see people, you know, what's so amazing to me at these shows and conventions is people just want, it's amazing. I guess it's like our 80s music and stuff like that. People want to go back and they want to remember what, what it was like when, you know, Boogie was on top of the world. And that's what I try to hang on to, too, is that was, that was probably my favorite era. Of course, getting into it a little bit. And, uh, yeah, and that's one of my favorite matches, just being with those guys.